All right, so Twitter and Jack Dorsey have, of course, hit the scene again. And could it take Bitcoin and give it a little bit more stability? We're going to find out today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Joining me is Alex. Great to have you back, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, Alex, let's jump into this. Twitter jumps, jumps into taking Bitcoin tips. Mm -hmm. This is something interesting because I've, I've, first of all, was kind of tracking this with the Lightning Network and where Podcasting 2.0 was going because they had kind of gone in this direction where you'd be able to drop Satoshis to a podcast via the Lightning Network. Basically on Twitter, that's kind of jumping into that. Uh, but before we get going, what do you think about that? I think this is a great move forward for the Lightning Network to see a big player really take a uh, vote of confidence on its ability to uh, basically uh, work as many of these smaller players have right. been attacking at Bitcoin, saying we're going to be the first to create uh, a framework where microtransactions can take place in a, uh, you know, legitimate way, yeah. a rational way. But now, all of a sudden, Bitcoin is, is back on the scene in a big way. So it's <laughs> exciting. Well, Lightning has always been kind of that bridge. You know, it's the, it is the solution that um, really is kind of built for taking Bitcoin. If, if you are looking right. at utilizing Bitcoin in, in very incremental micropayments, this is the perfect way. What I kind of wonder is whether or not Twitter is going to escalate this up you know, they, they're talking about wallets, they're talking about all these other aspects of what could be the future into social. And social payments have always been a big question mark as to whether or not it could be real. And I think this might be a good step in Absolutely. the right direction. It, in the influencer culture, having a way to monetize one's work, we yeah. see it in Twitch where people yeah. um, have a full stream of income coming from their uh, essentially creative output, TikTok, uh, Instagram even. So it is high time that Twitter does make that change. And it's something they've been talking about for a while that they implemented it with Bitcoin, I think has more to do with Jack Dorsey's stance sure. on Bitcoin. Um, whether or not Bitcoin is the ideal uh, transaction you know, feature here uh, is, is more an ideological question, I think, than, yeah. than a technical one. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's something that, of course, Jack is going to kind of work through. We'll get to the story in a second. I want to jump to the market cap. Let's take a look here on Live Coin Watch at where we are. Back down to 1.8. Oh, no, look at here. Yeah, back down to 1.8. You can kind of see the fall off right here. I mean, we've seen some really good numbers here in this week, uh, hovering back over the $2 trillion mark. Of course, Bitcoin coming in at 41.4 right now after dropping to... Uh, in the 40s, I think we will see a little bit of correction today. Also, if you were swing trading Bitcoin this week, probably made a little bit of profits there if you were able to get out at, say, the 44 range as it, as it clipped back up to 45. And as you mentioned, we're looking for some stability in Bitcoin. I don't think we're going to find it from the Twitter news alone. Uh, meanwhile, we have China once again just uh, railing the markets with, with news of they're trying to strip people's uh, channels to trade with crypto. So right. we're, we're seeing that stability is no easy thing to to find in these uh, in this tumultuous time in the market. So I don't expect that market cap to be on any steady rise anytime soon. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch because here's the key: if there are if there are a flow, and, and it's so interesting, these markets move so much with media. It's the only real market, I think, in terms of asset classes that moves literally in unison with media and or news. So right. if you look at stocks, though, they do move. The kind, they're somewhat predictive because you're putting out a quarterly statement mm -hmm. or you've got some sort of product release or big breaking news. Those kind of have it, but in the interim, to be so quickly um, adaptive to what's happening in the, in the news, a lot of these uh, cryptocurrencies have continued to kind of go in that. Jumping over to the story, Twitter to add Bitcoin lightning tips uh, basically is how it's going to go. So it's very similar into what I've seen with the podcasting 2.0 network. So I'm kind of intrigued with where this is going, but I'm looking at some of the data here. Just in general, it looks like it's going to be iOS only, now able to connect third-party tipping services. You've also got Twitter announced that they're going to do the uh, NFTs. What do you think about that? So this Tying is- Tying that in. Right, and, and it's something that 
any Twitter user has already been exposed to, already been introduced to, and perhaps in a, in a way that is more a uh, head scratcher, seeing uh, these small, uh, low definition pictures everywhere as, as people's profile pics into the uninitiated within NFTs. Yeah. It looks like people are crazy uh, <laughs> dipping into <laughs> cartoons that you've never heard of. Right. That, um, so um, the, the Twitter community though, especially the, obviously the crypto community, but right. even those like Jay-Z have embraced this. So the fact that Twitter is saying uh, there's something interesting we can do here um, is you know, a great move for for NFTs, but yeah. uh, I th we'll I'm, see. I'm intrigued with what Jack is trying to do in the sense of, listen, he's got a roadmap out there that I think a lot of people, well, most people don't know, only the inside executives of Twitter, but the, mm -hmm. the concept is, is that if you look at Twitter's development over the years, and I've been a little bit of a critic of Twitter because I feel like this is one of those projects, Twitter, that should be so much further along than it is mm -hmm. because of the fact that it has this capability of just instant, instantaneous news, constant communication opportunity. It has become a little bit of a dredge pool, but at the same time, it's also evolving into these kind of micro ecosystems like sure. crypto Twitter, black Twitter. We've seen all sorts of these, you know, certain segments within Twitter that have really started to uh, excel and, and yeah. do some great things. So, I, I think, interesting. You know, it, you know, Twitter's promise perhaps was never that it provided the most amount of features. In fact, I think Twitter's uh, uh, basically draw in at the beginning was, listen, here's 140 characters, do what you will with it. And the retweet feature, I think, you know, many people would consider that revolutionary in terms of yeah. moving information. But that was by no means a, a technical feat. Sure. So uh, this is this is a change for Twitter that they're saying, well, we're embracing more technical things that uh, the layperson may not necessarily understand quite yet. But they're betting soon will. Yeah, for sure. Back to the story here. Basically, as I said, rolling it out on iOS only. The feature is part of a broader push to increase the options Twitter uses with large followings to monetize their content. So this gets back into some monetization for you content creators out there. Uh, and the announcement didn't really address when the functionality would extend to Twitter on the web. That's gonna be interesting, because if Twitter on the web starts yeah. to get this, this could be kind of cool. Uh, the tipping feature will rely entirely on third-party payment systems like Jack Mahler's Strike App, which is the system that was implemented in El Salvador for their wallets. So that is interesting that Mahler's Strike is essentially kind of the tool here right. again to start to play in. So another big win for uh, Jack Mahler. I think we'll be seeing more of Strike and uh, it is clearly going in tandem with people's uh, stance on Bitcoin as opposed to the other uh, you know, cryptocurrencies right now that could take its place. Right. Uh, so as long as Bitcoin is top dog, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of Strike. This is something that Esther Crawford said, and I thought, well, this was interesting. She works on the product department. Uh, it says, Bitcoin and Lightning options, which will be available on Twitter uh, users worldwide, but there's a great opportunity for them to choose global barrierless options. So this gets interesting because she said during the call, Bitcoin represents one of the best options, but we know not everyone in the world transacts with Bitcoin yet. So I have a feeling there's gonna be some new projects that start to plug in to Twitter, especially on a global basis. If you look at the UK or South America, Brazil, you know some of these markets that really have a very uh, engaged social community, or especially around Twitter, right. the opportunity here might be to roll up some of these new uh, projects and, and get them into this phase, which I still feel that really altcoins are the magic that would make this work in a Twitter, Twitter ecosystem. But I think, we're dealing with a maxi here, a BTC <laughs> maxi. The, the word that I got caught up on was yet. Everyone in the world is not transacting with Bitcoin yet. yet. That is that is a maxi of work right there. So whether or not they mean we are about to onboard all sorts of altcoins or we would just like to see more people use Bitcoin, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say one or the other is, is clear to me from, from her, these statements. Right. Yeah, I think this is good news for the, the Bitcoin community in general because it, again, only makes the awareness that much more, even though Twitter is still around 250 to 300 million, it's, it's not a Facebook, 
you know, it's not an Instagram, which has been able to really kind of accelerate so much in the user side, definitely not a TikTok, but it definitely has its place in terms of the influential. Mm -hmm. And that is something that even though we think here in the crypto community and also in the tech community, we think that the influencers out there already know about cryptocurrency. Sure. I talk to influencers daily that are like, hey, Paul, I love the, the new tech channel you guys are doing. I didn't know there was so <laughs> much uh, you know, involved in blockchain. And right. they're, ex- they're basically exploring this for the first time and have uncovered what they thought is it's like Pandora's box. You know, it's just unbelievable. Absolutely. And, and you know, to your point earlier, the way that information flies on Twitter and the way people are rubbing up against each other, the way that communities right. are uh, being created out of nothing and turned into these robust uh, you know, ecosystems is, is unparalleled elsewhere. So uh, perhaps Twitter's monetization effort here will solidify uh, something in terms of Twitter usership at very least. So of yeah. course, you know, um, it may be smaller, but it has people who are you know, just so dedicated to Return for sure. I know exactly what you mean. It's it's one of those things. Twitter is just this phenomenon that even still to this day uh, surprises me that people in my own inner circle of just you know business people, either one they're not on Twitter or or they use it, but they use it as a you know voyeur you know type approach. Sure. They only read and watch or follow certain you know big personalities or big influencers. And that's kind of where they get connected with them, which is on Twitter, which is great. Hey, listen, that's that's uh, that's how the Kardashians kind of blew up. So, you know, yeah, kind of have to go with that. But the point being is, is that as we start to see Twitter and other ecosystems really start to bolster, this adoption craze is really moving the needle, I think, for cryptocurrency in general. And when you move that, you're moving Bitcoin, which we are going to get to a chart at the end of this video, so make sure and stay around for that. And also make sure and like and subscribe here because that's gonna be important for you to get more content on this. We're gonna cut to a couple other stories before we get to that chart. And also we've got a big, uh, some big news coming. Well, it's already here actually, and we've talked about it here on the show before, and that's Diamond Circle. So Diamond Circle is going to be a new membership program that you'll be able to launch off of our YouTube channel. Go over to paulbarronnetwork.com and you'll be able to join a new inner circle of content and member only materials. And best of all, we're gonna do some really interesting things and that is we're gonna give away some digital assets. So that means tokens, NFTs, all those kind of things. And it's at no cost to you guys. So make sure and keep keep your news radar up for that as we get ready to launch on that. Let's jump to this story right here. Great network, the startup that broke Solana raises another (laughs) 1.8 million bucks. So what do you think about this one? Pretty bold of them to come marching back onto the street after dashing <laughs> Solana's hopes and dreams. But, um, you know, they mention it themselves in this article that uh, they are just one of the many potential uses of Solana. Right. Uh, this was this was not unique, and this is a challenge that Solana needed to face um, eventually, and perhaps it's good that it uh, happens sooner than later. That's- I agree with you. Here's, here's what you have to look at. If you're... If you've been in tech, and most of you watching this channel probably have been in it or around it for quite some time, the best thing that you can do in technology is fail fast and fail forward. Mm -hmm. And Solana, to have this challenge on their network this early, while it was a beta, is a beta, is, in my opinion, was kind of a godsend for them because it, it, one, it revealed some things that they needed to get under control. That's only going to make the system better, which again is going to only make the ecosystem of cryptocurrency and blockchain in general better, which is going to bolster Bitcoin again. So a good problem to be having in this world is that too many users are uh, using a product. Yeah. So um, victim of, of an ecosystem's own success yeah. is something that we are all too familiar with with Ethereum fees. So um, big time. Yeah. Inside the story, Grape Network, the project uh, whose token sale broke Solana last week, raised 1.8 million as we talked. VC bur- uh, firms now jumping in on this one, which I thought was interesting. The Community Toolkit developer closed a 1.2 uh, million round with Multicoin Capital on Thursday. Kind of shows where this is going, and this was basically on the heels of last week's public sale with 600K. Not big, but interesting. We didn't break it out 
So I love this statement. We didn't break it out of intention, said great <laughs> network founder and, and core contributor, Dean Pappas, who, who basically told Coindesk. I, I thought that was interesting in the sense that I just wonder if they knew at any point that the number of transactions that would flow against the network, surely they had to understand the protocol parameters. Ooh. I can't imagine that a blockchain <laughs> developer would not kind of right. have that check mark on well, his list. You know, Solana talks a big game. They're, they're supposed to be the, the baddest, the fastest network out there. So I think maybe even if it was in the back of their head that this could be bad, they said, well, um, you know, Solana needs let's, to be put to the test. Let's see how it goes. They're built on Solana, so why would they try to, you know, yeah. charge against the master? I'm not sure. This is an interesting statement uh, that rather a niche product like Grape could break the blockchain with the highest claim transaction capacity, to your point, and any major project raise serious questions for Solana's tech stack. This is the thing I brought up last week. I got a little hate in the comments. <laughs> and, and my point was is that, you know, it's good in the sense that you have to decentralize even more. You cannot put all of your eggs in, in multiple baskets in this particular case, like data centers, mm -hmm. which is really kind of where the, the problem started to arise for Solana. But Project Leads uh, plan to issue a full postmortem in the coming weeks, but early assessments from the Solana Foundation point to the Grape IDO, uh, which is what was the culprit. So, boom, there you yeah. go. Now they found it. <laughs> We'll the, see. The mouse in the yeah. maze. The, the full it. report is is in, uh, pending, I believe. So we'll, we'll see if um, if that remains as, as one of the top culprits. But um, it, it's taking an early lead. Yeah. yeah. If you look, and also I think if you're tracking this Solana ecosystem, I've been impressed with num the number of, of projects that are starting to develop in there, but also right. just the quality level of these projects, much like... Polkadot, and even Avalanche. Avalanche is another one that is really, their ecosystem has just continued to, to fly. And again, these things are, and I believe, are going to be the future of adoption. So all of this is moving back to adoption. Last story here is Miami coin going mainstream faster than Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, this is our own, you know, <laughs> guy in our backyard here, Mayor Suarez. He, he's technically right, I believe, in one way, is that the sheer number of people who are, you know, even aware that this exists, yeah. had a quicker ramp up than Bitcoin. But that is perhaps its, its only uh, claim <laughs> uh, over Bitcoin, I, yeah. I hate to say it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think the point is, is that with what Miami is doing with their cryptocurrency. And I think, one, it's a good move in the sense of, it's a great experiment of trying to see if mun municipalities can really create an alternate ecosystem for sure. funding and backing projects. If this works, and I can't imagine with the kind of community that we have here in South Florida, right. that it won't, but could this work in Alabama? Could this work in, sure. you know, Tennessee? Not saying bad things about Alabama, Tennessee, is some, but you just don't have the groups or the masses. Of course. But, you know, there is something at least, you know, to be said for the adoption curve of any technology that, no, I don't expect that, you know, certain, every municipality is where Miami is because we're at the bottom of this adoption curve. We mm -hmm. are the early adopters. Right. Mayor, uh, Mayor Suarez, without a doubt, is at the very base of that adoption curve. So ultimately, could the sort of stragglers in technology end up adopting something as uh, completely revolutionary as a municipality or a government uh, implementing a coin for tax purposes? I think that could be commonplace in 10 years, but yeah. no, I don't think, um, of course. My, that's my concern, good, very good point. That's my concern, has Miami uh, got out maybe just a little too early in front of this? And you know, well, hey, yeah. listen, uh, Twitter started in 2006, Facebook right on its heels. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, at that time, a lot of people thought that was never going to be a thing. By 2010, it was still kind of fledgling, and then by 2012, 2014, we sure. really started to see those social media platforms take off. So I think it's just a matter of the network effect, you know, that starts to apply to these. So definitely going to be interesting to watch. Absolutely. I like and, it. I mean, the sheer implications for, once again, governments being able to overhaul a tax system, which is, you know, 
Mayor Suarez talking a big game, saying this could plausibly, and you know, I think most people would just insert the word implausibly, uh, replace other forms of taxation in Miami, but um, that is for the near future. For the further future, uh, the implications are, are just vast. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I promised a chart for you guys on Bitcoin. Let's take a look as the market is a little bit volatile right now. This was a chart, that, and it is a chart that we've been continuing to track over the past few months just to kind of keep our own scorecard of where we think things are going based on our amplification and our sentiment analysis. And this goes all the way back to August 11th, uh, which we had scored an amplification of 61.44, which is a really good one for Bitcoin. Showed a little downward trend and then got that little bump. We then pulled another uh, sentiment bubble, which uh, showed a little bit more good action, which was 74 and 73 on the amp side. Again, a little slide and then also hitting that period right there where we clipped into the 52K mark. And then we pulled another bubble in that correction, which dropped us down to right there around the 42 mark. And that was pulling at 71.09, still very strong in 71.28, little sideways, and then reached another little high right here at 48.7. And then this is where we have started to see the slide. We haven't pulled a bubble on this one yet, but we did have our amplification zone mapped in. And what was interesting to me is that we were able, based on our data, we had this trough sitting here. Mm -hmm. It was just holding. Why in the world would that have happened here? <laughs> and this gets back to this whole thing that sentiment and amplification, in my opinion, is one of the biggest things that moves markets. Now, granted, it doesn't move whales to a certain extent, but whales follow where the liquidity goes, and the liquidity goes to where the sentiment goes. So in essence, it's kind of driving the whales as well. I think, you know, there's a reason why when looking at a chart, we're not simply looking at the RSI and, and so on. We're looking at things like right. sentiment because, yeah, it absolutely is. It, it holds weight here for how long. It's it yet to be determined. But as more liquidity enters any market, the idea that uh, simple sentiment can sway it should diminish over time. But um, for now, this is a very important indicator, I think. I just want to look here uh, on, I just pulled up the market cipher on this to kind of see where we were looking at this little dip right here, because this is essentially the money flow that you're seeing right here in the red. Uh, obviously, we're seeing some momentum movement right here, a little bit of another dip right here. So we're, we've seen this little jump right here. This showed a little bit of sign that we might be coming back into the positive money. But as you can kind of see, Indicators right here on Market Cipher are really starting to push this down again. So right here where we are trading right now as of this minute, we're right at that 40,900 mark. Question mark here is, does Bitcoin break the 40K barrier again? What are your thoughts on that one? I, I think in all likelihood, we'll see sub 40K before we see 60K. Right. But, uh, you know, that's perhaps A lot more not volatility. Saying, right. It's not saying much in the world of you know, Bitcoin's volatility. Yeah, so. yeah. Hopefully you guys have, have been, uh, maybe you've been doing some swing trades. That's a, a great thing, you know, so make sure and stay uh, tuned here. So Alex, what do you think? Let's wrap this one up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're listening to us on the podcast right now, wherever you get your podcast, definitely check us out on YouTube. This chart discussion, for example, would be uh, quite a bit better with, yeah. the, with the visual <laughs> application there. Yeah. Um, but... For sure. If you're here on YouTube, of course, make sure and like and subscribe. It's the best way you're going to get more content here from TechPath and also from the Paul Barron Network. And again, as a reminder, we've got some big things happening with Diamond Circle, so stay tuned for all those kind of cool things. If you have an idea for a show or you want us to get an interview on for you, a project analysis, all those kind of things we take on the live streams and also in the comments, or you can, of course, hit me up on Twitter. Maybe I need to turn on those Satoshis on Twitter. <laughs> Anyway, we'll catch you next time right here on TechBat. Yeah.